Hey everybody, welcome back to Brian Rice Creative. Right now, I'm going to get into my very first product review, and that is of the Wacom Express Key Remote. And this is a device which is one of the most useful pieces of equipment that I've purchased in the last year. And I say that having purchased a Nikon Z6 and a brand new MacBook Pro, in that same 12 month time span, that's how useful I find this device. However, it hasn't been without its struggles, which I'm going to get into a little bit. So what is the Wacom Express Key Remote and what does it do? Basically, what it enables you to do, especially if you are a content creator, it enables you to program all the various shortcut keys in whatever software that you use and it's not just confined to one piece of software. If you, you know, like all, we all work in, in several different pieces of software, whether it's Photoshop, Lightroom, in my case, Final Cut Pro, or you may work in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere. And for each program, you can customize your shortcut keys onto this remote, and it makes your productivity so much more efficient and and if you, have bad back, if you have back problems like I do from having bad posture for so long, because, you know, years and years working in an office setting, I kind of like this, have, my, have both of my arms forward on the keyboard and I'm slouching because it's just the way I am. And it really has done a number on my back, especially for the muscles in between my shoulder blades. But this enables you... And this is one of the useful aspects of this device is that you could just have your hand in your lap and you're just hitting these shortcut keys while you're working. And it has been a game changer for me. And based off that alone, I'd recommend it to anybody. <laughs> if you have if you have issues in that regard, because I, I, I like to kick back. I know that there's issues. I know that they tell you you have to have this perfect posture and you know your backs up and your eye level and all this stuff and i'm telling you i can never maintain that for more than like five minutes the next thing i know i'm back to kicking back like this and and that's a problem because what i find lately is that when i'm doing a long editing session and i'm reaching forward to the keys and i could put the keyboard in my lap but it's not quite the same and it's awkward and uncomfortable to have the keyboard because I've got the long key here and it's got the 10 key and it's just an awkward feel. And I've even got a laptop or, you know, I even got a sort of a, you know, a laptop case. I can't fit it into the screen, but you get my point. Uh, that's an option and I've done that and it helps a little bit, but nothing quite helps like just having this in your lap. And it's amazing for that reason alone. And, and it doesn't even, you know, you don't even need to own a regular Wacom tablet in order to use this, although Wacom kind of advertises it to give you the impression that you do. You know, oh, it's compatible with this model and that model and the other model. It's like, here's the, you don't need it. You can just get this by itself and program this to program the shortcut keys into any piece of software you are using. You could even like, you program it into your browser window if you just want to scroll down and and whatever it is, you know, you know, back the back key, the forward key, whatever. But my primary use for this is right. The main one right now, the one that I find this the most useful in is Lightroom. Um, I also have shortcuts uh, programmed for Photoshop and Final Cut. And you see the device right here. And all you need to do is flip the power switch and then you see the light come on uh, that's how you know that it's working and I'm gonna get a little bit into the connectivity issues that I've had with it later but first I'm gonna get into Lightroom and here's my Lightroom setup this is an event that I shot uh, earlier this week this is the first week of January 2020 and I shot two events on New Year's Eve so this is from the first event that I shot so if you forget what you have programmed into a specific key you just press that button and it pops up and you could just reference everything to get an idea of what everything is. Now this um, that I've got highlighted right now, this takes you and I'm pressing the center button. I'm pressing the center button right now. 
and it's cycling through the different options, the different wheel options. And if you're familiar with Wacom, it's exactly the same as the uh, wheel on the Wacom tablets. Um, so in this case, that's sort of a auto zoom scroll, brush sizes and rotate. Um, the one that I use the most here in Lightroom is the brush size. If I'm using, if I'm painting in, a, if I'm painting in an adjustment layer, and then you go to, um, then you go to, okay, pause. And then you go into this one and I've got one to show masks. So if I'm painting, painting an adjustment layer on a photo and I want to see how much I've got masked, I press the far left, uh, arrow button or the far left button on the wheel here and that will turn the mask area red so I know exactly what I'm painting and then uh, before after which is another favorite one that's at the bottom so as I'm editing a photo I just press the before after and it works great and of course when I'm done uh, I will export photos I have these programmed in such a way that I find works for me in my workflow and uh, maybe you would want something different maybe this gives you some ideas now I may show you some uh, details of how I edited a given photo, but this is more of how I use the Wacom in conjunction with Lightroom in particular and why I prefer it to Lightroom. And before I really get any further, um, I use Lightroom to cull my photo sessions in addition to edit them. And I know a lot of photographers, if not most photographers, prefer Photo Mechanic. So I'm aware that is out there. I've even downloaded the trial a couple of times and tried it out and it seems pretty cool. Uh, but I've never bought it when the subscription period had expired. Um, maybe I was just too lazy to spend the money, too cheap to spend the money on it. Uh, but I guess for me, I always felt like I was going through the photos twice, so I think that's probably the major reason that I never got into Photo Mechanic, but I'm aware of it. And you know, furthermore, you can apply this same technique to Photo Mechanic. Uh, it's just a nice thing for me. I mean, I've, I'm just clicking through. I've got, I've got that for my forward arrow, that for my back arrow, and you can see forward, back, forward. So one of the things, and this is just a minor quibble for me, it's certainly not a deal breaker, but I do prefer the way the Wacom tablets work when you uh, hold, when you lightly touch the express keys on the Wacom tablets, this automatically pops up. The settings, the express key settings automatically pop up on your screen on the left hand side. And that's such a convenient thing to see. You don't have to press anything. You just lightly touch and then if you've forgotten maybe where what key is where it'll pop up and let you know whereas with the express key remote you have to uh, actually actively physically press the settings button and that's a minor thing it is certainly not a deal breaker so as a quick aside uh, when I'm shooting an event I'm walking around pretty much making laps around the venue taking random shots taking party pics of people taking random shots that look dramatic or interesting to me. Uh, in this case, uh, one of the performers at the uh, New Year's Eve party that I was shooting the other night was in the corner posing for somebody else. And I saw that and I thought it looked cool. So I just took that photo. Uh, but we're going to stop here and examine this one real quick and really detail how I use this remote. And here's the photo and I've got the space bar button programmed here at the bottom and it zooms in to a hundred percent you zoom out again and it zooms in and you can just see the photo at a hundred percent and I'm just clicking through right click right click left click if I like a photo I've got a, pro a button programmed to select the to flag the photo um, if I change my mind the opposite one I have it set to remove the flag so just uh, everything I try to do in a very symmetrical kind of way that makes sense to me. So like I said, left arrow here. So I'm gonna get this better position here. So, um, so left arrow to go back, right arrow to go forward. That's select, that's deselect or remove flag, add flag. And I'm gonna go 
down a ways. And I'm not gonna spend all day because I do, I think you're kind of getting the point of how I have this set up. I'm not really gonna do a deep dive into my settings tonight. So I really love this for Lightroom in particular. Like I said, I prefer to use the Wacom Intuos Pro tablet for Photoshop because I'm using the pen to remove blemishes and flyaway errors and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but for Lightroom, sometimes I'll use the adjustment brush, but usually it's exactly what you're seeing me do right now. And uh, that connection lost is my Wacom tablet powering down. Um, and as I go through, again, you're seeing it. I'm just going through all these photos. So this video isn't so much about how I edit photos per se, as it is about how I utilize the Wacom Express Key Remote in my workflow and how much that's improved my productivity, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, how much it's helped my back. And that is another thing. I mean, that by itself to me would be enough for me to recommend uh, the Wacom Express Key Remote to give me a sec to anybody, especially if you have back problems, especially if you don't practice good posture. And like I said, I've I always feel like I'm slouching. It's I always when I'm focused on something, my posture just goes all just I just lose my posture completely. But just to be able to have this and kick back exactly like I am right now, I'm leaning back. So I'm just got got this in my lap and I'm clicking away, and it's just made such a huge difference for me. So now I want to address a couple of issues that I identified that I think everybody who's interested in this device, and I think really any kind of Wacom product should be aware of, and that is, first of all, the drivers. Uh, be very careful when you update drivers. I did. I spent countless hours trying to figure out why this wasn't working properly, and I, the, the latest drivers as of, I think, December 21st, they don't work in, uh, they don't work for me. I mean, I program them in and no matter what I try to do, it's just using the default settings. You can program the settings in and it shows up in the Wacom settings panel. But when you actually try to use the Wacom remote, the, when you push the buttons, either it doesn't respond at all or it uses the default settings that are already programmed in. And that was very, very frustrating. So what I ended up doing was having to uninstall it and then install an older version. I don't remember the exact uh, driver number, but it's dated like October 20th or something of uh, 2019, we're in 2020 now. And so I think now it works, it works fine now. I think some of the modifier keys, that's another little, hinky thing about this, some of the modifier keys, your shift, your control option command, don't always work. That's just a thing to be aware of. You may have to step back and stay on an older driver in order to get this work to work. Now keep in mind, I'm also on Apple. And so Catalina just got updated and I think that's kind of having a problem. Catalina got released, I think in October. And uh, so there's been some issues there. And if Adobe updates it, then then it could become an issue. So just be aware that drivers can be a thing with the Wacom product. And so the other thing that I wanna talk about before we wrap on this is the some of the issues I had with the connectivity and the reliability of this device. I spent a lot of time troubleshooting this and what would happen is I'd be working and this thing would just shut off and stop working. It just would kind of just decide that it would that it was done it would check out and I thought well maybe the batteries maybe it ran out of batteries well no this says the batteries at hundred percent I even plugged it in directly well maybe that'll fix it and it kind of fixed it for a little bit but then it stopped working and I it seemed to happen frequently and like I said I got so frustrated with it that I was about to return it and I was really bummed out because I do when this thing's working it's amazing and I think what the solution is, what I finally figured out after spending lots of time trying to troubleshoot this, is to move the wireless fob that, the, the wireless receiver, into a USB port that's as close to the device as possible with as little other electronic devices in the vicinity. What I seem to have discovered 
was that before I had the wireless receiver on a USB hub that was on the other side of the desk, on the other side of my monitor, on the other side of my MacBook. I mean, basically I have my monitor, I have two monitors. I've got a USB-C hub, I've got my laptop, and furthermore, I've got an eGPU on a shelf directly above the USB hub. So all these electronic devices in the vicinity apparently interfere with the wireless signal from your from the Wacom Express Key to the receiver. And the Wacom technicians confirmed that with me. So what as what I've ended up doing is keeping the key fob, or not the key fob, but the wireless fob on a USB port that's directly facing me. It's within about a foot and a half. In fact, I can stretch my arm and tap it with my finger right now. And since I've done that, I've had zero issues with reliability. So that's something you should be aware of with this device is it's sort and it's a, it's a shortfall of the device too, is that it is not Bluetooth uh, the way the new Wacom Intros Pro tablets are. You still have to use a wireless fob, uh, but just be aware of that. Um, if I didn't explain it as clearly as I needed to, let me know in the comments and I'll try to clarify it more articulately than I am right now. But it's something again, to be aware of and to try if you're having connectivity issues with it yourself. So I think that about does it for this review. I give it a four and a half stars out of five. I wanna give it five stars, but I can't for the reasons I just detailed for you. And as much as I love using this right now, I'm well aware, I'm keeping my eye out for any more issues on the reliability front. I think it's gonna be fine, um, but I'll keep, you know, I'll definitely come back here and update if something something goes wrong with it further but all things considered this is an amazing device I highly recommend it and it's going to improve your workflow no matter what software you use so go check it out it's $99 uh, on online you can go to B&H photo you can go to Adorama um, I, I've even seen my local Best Buy carry it in stock but they carry it for a lot more money so anyway thanks for sticking around Please like and subscribe, and I will see you all again really soon.